guys, welcome back to our channel. We're George and Martha. Hello. Today we'll be recapping The Real Housewives of New York City, Season 11, Episode 15. Life is not a cabaret. Oh boy. Well, so... Tinsley. Well, you know, this is weird. Yet again, I don't know why we seem to be getting fewer episodes of new york and then they show us all this stuff that happened the night before that they just don't give us in an episode that looks really good like it was a lot of fun to see apparently sonia had another drunken outburst after bethany had to tend to her and they're talking about it the next day so bethany wakes up with tinsley and i don't know what happened to tinsley tinsley must have taken a luann pill because tinsley goes from you know she talks like this she's like oh. that guy's texting me he wants to go for a drink on the down low what does that mean bethany has hooked her up with this guy and bethany brett like, yeah is that his name brett Some, i don't know and he's 60 and they say he's cute this drives me crazy nobody is cute at 60 they could be handsome they right. could be beautiful it's you know cute is for babies for right. pets a... for twinks and <laughs> You wouldn't call a bottle of wine cute, right? You might say an ice cream cone is cute. You, it, it just doesn't, it's weird. I just don't even like that word, cute. It's, I know, it's bizarre. It's really bizarre. What does is, what is Joan Crawford say? You a got case a, of the cutes. you got a case of the cutes. Well, Mr. Lesseps has a case of the cutes, which oh. we will get to. So Bethany is talking about the night before, which we didn't get. And she says that Sonia was being, again, hammered put her foot, slammed her foot on a glass table, knocked over a glass and could have basically cut her foot up, like put her foot through the glass table. And she's like, I cannot go through this. I can't keep babysitting her. And, you know, in fairness to Bethany, she hasn't used the card, as they would say, but she did just lose somebody she adored to a drug overdose. And I think she's sensitive to having to babysit someone who's out of control with what appears to be a little bit of an alcohol dependence. I would never say Sonia's an alcoholic. I don't think Sonia displays alcoholic behavior, really. I no, think she's she just, not sneaky and manipulative like some, some other people. people. Yeah, I think she just gets out of control and... Sorry. Just got very distracted. Sorry. How dare you? I wanted my cookie dough. I mean, I'm in the middle of a thought. <laughs> You're scaring me, no. Martha. <laughs> Luann would kill over that. Well, hmm. So... Bethany, in a very loving way, goes to talk to Sonia the next morning, and she's in bed with Ramona, and Bethany and Ramona are able to communicate to Sonia, like, we're worried about you, like, and in, in a genuine way, it's not the, we're so worried about you, she's just like, you know, you're really, you're a little out of control, and I don't know where she came from, but Luann appears, <laughs> like fucking Ka in the Jungle Book, you know, Bethany was right about Luann. Remember all those years ago? She said, you're a snake and a liar and you'll die a liar. She had her number and I feel, I understand Bethany because I would have wanted to help Luann too. But you know what? I hope she never does it again. She slithers her way in into their little like powwow. And Bethany's saying, you're teetering on the edge a little, Sonia. And we hear, no, you teetered off the edge. That's what's so worrying. And Sonia picks up on this. She's like, but I don't like the place you're coming from. You're being very judgmental. I'm not. You should come to a meeting. Word. Uh, with me. It's almost like being at the cabaret. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be the speaker, Sonia. Maybe I could even be your Respond. sponsor. <laughs> come, Sonia. Come to the meeting. Come to the cabaret, old chum. Oh my God. I know. She's a little bit... She reminds me of Sarah Jessica Parker in Hocus Pocus. Come, little boozer. I'll take the away. It's really scary. And they all pick up on it. And where we just left off is Sonia saying, I don't really want to go to AA. I actually don't think she needs to go to a meeting. Although, you know what? Sonia reminds me of those kids that you put through the scared straight program. Like, they're not drug addicts yet, but you want them to meet. Actually, they did this to me in school. <laughs> we had some crazy fucking guy that they paid to come talk to us. And initially, it was normal. It's like, drugs are really bad. You know what was I'm it saying? Dare? Drugs are really, really bad. And the kids are giggling. You know, we're like, eh. And he's like, you think it's funny? You know what happened to a girl I knew who got drunk and passed out at a college party? The boys put beer bottles in her vagina! And we were like... How old were you? Middle school. Middle school. Yep. But I think that's what Sonia's going to experience at this meeting. I think Sonia's just being a typical floozy where she's like, Oh yeah, I drank a lot. Oh, 
uh, self-medicating, you know, with her Miss Havisham problems. And Luann's going to drag her to this meeting where people are, some of them are like homeless from South Beach. And they're like, uh, 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 keep coming back. Yeah, but I feel bad do for Sonia. Do your Yenta. Do your Yenta. How many days do you have sober? <laughs> Come here, sweetheart. Oh, so the first meeting I ever went to completely traumatized me, and I will never forget this woman. I mean, many people came up to me because they, they, some meetings are better than others. I went to one where everybody descended upon me like fucking vultures, like out of the, woo fresh meat Ooh. but this one woman comes up to me and she's like hello I'm Cassie it's like hello look it's so easy just don't drink oh. I was appalled I was like then why do you why do you come what how and then, old were you for this 18 18 clearly scared straight <laughs> really worked for a year really worked well on me <laughs> really did the trick but, uh, yeah, no, there's, like, a lot of yentas. I can picture the types. At this meeting that they're going to, which I'm You've not naming to. names. I've been there, actually, with somebody that... Similar to... Uh... A little similar to Luann, yeah. And it's a motley crew. You've got some people that are, like, homeless. You have some people that are rich and acting like they're not any... Like, they're like, no, I'm just like the homeless people. But they really think that they're not, you know? And then you have like some of the old Jewish women that are there gossiping about everyone, yeah. you know. They, and then they'll share. I'm working, working very hard on not being gossipy. They're my favorite ones. I've come though. a long way. They're like Jill Zarin, you know. I'm honored to be here. I'm blessed. Very and, lucky. And that's my time. I thank God every day that I'm an alcoholic. I'm Karen and I'm an alcoholic. You know, when I meet people who give me an attitude at the mall, you know, when I'm working the counter... All I think to myself is, thank God I'm sober because I have a program and they don't. It's a very... I befriended all the old Jews in Boca. I did too. I did too. There is no AA dress code. Let's just be clear right now. This is about Luann controlling Sonia. And wanting the attention on her. Yeah, and I'm sure Luann is going to pick some slutty outfit to go to this meeting after she criticized Sonia and made her go put on a t-shirt. And I've had people do that to me. Oh, I'm not going to name names, but I once had a sponsor that would make comments like this and tell me, you really have to stay away from the men. Yeah. You really have to stay away from the men. And then would spend an hour picking out her sexiest possible outfit so she could seduce all the married men. And you're just waiting there at the end of the meeting and yep. she's flirting with all the men. Oh, flirting. One time I caught her giving a blowjob in her car. Wait, what? Mm -hmm. Is yep. this the one who works at a mall? <clears throat> yep. Lots of people work at malls. Lots of them. Yep. Wait. How old is this? She's old. Yeah, and on that note, yet again, Ramona is busted because Tinsley said she's making out with Harry Dubin. Wasn't making out with Harry Dubin. No, it wasn't. And then she's showing her that TMZ got her and it's like, um, uh, 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 like the most disgusting. Poor Avery. Ramona's whole fucking face is in Harry Dubin's mouth. Poor Avery. Well, Avery must be beyond mortified by her mother at this point. I think she's probably immune. Immune. But that's what I witnessed. There was one day that my sponsor got to the meeting, and I thought I was just going up to her to say hello. And I walk up to the glass, and before I can do knock-knock, I see her in a very similar type of makeout. And this guy that she was making out with was really gross. He had this big mustache and a fake tan. He looked like George Hamilton. <laughs> and he had no money. And he would pretend he had money. And he owed everyone in the meeting money. And he didn't like me around. Because he knew that if he had this person alone, that he could get more blowjobs out of her. And every time I was around, <laughs> he would say, Hello, Martha. <laughs> That's creepy. Was so he was trying creepy. to be like the moral authority. Yeah, and then I'd leave, and they were playing tonsil hockey in the car. AA is like Peyton Place. It's just, it's not like, it's not the best pl 
play. It's not the healthiest of places to be. It's you go there, you get sober, and then it's also I think ironically particularly toxic to newcomers. I think it needs a little work. Oh, it's very black and white. Yeah, it's like I feel like if you've been around the block and you come to a meeting, you know what to do. You know that there's people that are gonna share opinions that they're not supposed to. You know that there's people that are gonna be inappropriate. You get in and you get out. I don't want to totally bash AA because I think what what alternative is there really? You know, it's saved more lives than any other program for recovery. It's not perfect by any stretch. A lot of groups, I think it's a little bit group specific, are very cult-like. But what are you going to do? It's sort of like churches. There's some churches that are much more tolerant and healthy. And then there's other churches that are really strict and crazy and try to control your whole life. And... It appears that uh, Luann is becoming a little bit of the Jim Jones of AA. I feel really bad. Poor Barbara. Maybe she deserves an Athel. I don't think she does. I don't think she's a right fit with this group. New and Jersey. I, <gasps> she would have fit in a lot better Ooh. with New Jersey. She would have. I think she was just really horribly miscast. And she's finally... I think she's tried to be cool she tried to be nice. She tried to fight back. And she has been bullied. We've been saying that all along. They treat her differently. And the wheels came off just now. And she's crying. And she said she feels like the kid at summer camp that gets left by their parents. And all the mean girls are there. And, and you're just like... she's also realizing what kind of friend Ramona or uh, Luann, Luann is. Well, the thing is she comes to the ladies and she's saying how she feels... And they're like, well, you're giving us a very... Negative energy. Yeah, your, your energy is very standoffish, which it is a little bit. I think because they've made her very guarded. But then Bethany's talking to her more. And Bethany points out, well, you know, instead of bonding with the group, you've spent a lot of time holding up Luann's, you know, what do they call that? The train. Train. She's been after Luann. It's like the little butler with the dustpan. You know, every time Luann shits everywhere. Oh, dude, pardon me, madame. You know, and they've been trying to tell her, you're drinking the Kool-Aid, this and that. And now she's realizing it. Like, I just spent an entire season trying to get on this show. And I'm not going to get on this show because this fucking bitch friend of mine is not a friend. And I had her back this whole time. And now that I'm crying, it's time for my meeting. Bye, Babs. She couldn't care less. Bethany is so much more comforting to poor Barbara. She probably knows her, right? Or they they had a history. I not guess. like not like Luann. Luann's no. one of her best friends, and it, I mean that was really sad to see. I do kind of get why they didn't it gel is, with her right away because she does. She's like, she's uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm trying to fit in with this fucking group. I don't understand why you never met a construction worker. But it's almost like if the construction worker just took off his hard hat, yeah. you know, and was like, you know, I'm a little fucking depressed. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know. I gotta say. It's the first time I really fell for her, though, is because you actually saw her. Her humanity. She humanity. showed vulnerability. But it did. It was like the construction worker takes off his hard hat. And he's like, you I'm know, Just me. At the end of the day, yeah, I build shit with the drywall. When I come home, it's just Bob. And that's it. And that's it. And I'm feeling lonely. Luann is such an asshole. First of all, she makes uh, Sonia change, and then she comes down the stairs, uh, basically see through sundress. Yep. Up to her crotch. Yep. They go to the meeting. Yep. Meetings are traumatizing, especially for somebody who has either never been to a meeting, does not have you know an alcoholic you know personality. Um, yeah, for example, imagine if you've never been to one of these things. You've been having a really hard time. Somebody drags you there. They're ending. They grab your hand. Give me your hand. And all of a sudden, it works if you work it. So work it. You're worth it. It's so scary. And you hear people talking about, oh, I lost my daughter. You know, my daughter doesn't talk to me anymore. I'm living on the street. Um, oh, yeah. Know, I my, used to be a firefighter. I, I had a house. I had a, a dog. It's crazy. And so, so Sonia said she's pretty happy. I mean, she's probably not, you know, the happiest person in the world. But, I mean, she's not as miserable as someone like Luann is. That's traumatizing. I don't believe Sonia cannot stop. 
I think Sonia just needed her friends to say, knock it off. And she stops. We've seen her stop before and be sober the whole season. I don't think she's one of these people that will just constantly drink like that all the time. I think she's just getting a little carried away. She's partying hard. She has fun. Yeah, she's a floozy. She likes the attention. She likes putting on a show. But then I just, I don't buy that she's like really this disconnected, complete, full-blown alcoholic like Luann is. Yeah, Sonia, okay. She fell, she fell and, you know, almost hit her head on the table. Luann arrested. Twice, right? Twice. Now she, I mean, just sued by your children. Talk, they'd say it like unmanageable. Sonia is not unmanageable. Luann, major unmanageable. So Sonia comes back from the meeting, initially seems okay, but says, I really didn't like it. Yeah. And Luann is oblivious to this. She's not picking up that Wanna Sonia. Want to go swimming? No, no. This is in the car. In the car when they're on the way to come back to meet the girls. What was she saying in the car? Sonia was saying, I didn't really like the meeting. Those stories yeah, really yeah. affect me. And Luann's just like, la, 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 la. And then when they get to the cabana with the other ladies... Sonia starts having a meltdown. She starts saying, this isn't working for me. I don't like their sand and things are wet. And she starts crying. And it's sort of like when a little girl is complaining all of a sudden. I don't like my dress. No, I don't like it. It doesn't feel... No, 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 no. And you're like, what's wrong? Oh, I miss mommy. That's what's wrong. Like, she's she's acting very irritable. Everything's bothering her. And she's freaked out by the meeting. And all the women come rushing over to her because she's really genuinely upset. Not Luann. Luann is like... Uh, Sonia, it's a cabana. We're at the beach. Of course there's sand. Of course. They're all like, hello. And then Luann's complaining. Bethany's like, go be part of the solution. Can you be part of the solution? They're like, we can leave. We'll go home, Sonia. They're really being compassionate. And as they're all deciding, like, maybe we should get out of here. Anybody feel like a swim? (laughs) It's true. You can't even believe what you're watching. I really think this woman has narcissistic she, personality oh, she does. disorder. I mean, my, my, my like jaw is in my lap watching this. She's really despicable. And she just walks off completely emotionless. Like Bethany says, she's devoid of humanity. And even Barb the Builder, who was Luann's ride or die, is like, go for a swim. What are you, what? The we girl's were, crying. And we were discussing prior to this what Luann is like in meetings and we decided that she was someone who just talked and talked and talked just to hear herself speak didn't isn't that what we we've always with? said that that's the type she is and Sonia goes, and how great her life is now and how 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 healthy she is and how blessed she is so Sonia goes and says back at the cabana says you know I don't like to talk but you know Luann gets up there and talks, 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 talks. Yeah, and she even mentioned she like she, she got out of her handcuffs and she got arrested and she hit the cop and then she's like, "Well, I just tell my story." They randomly pick you. They randomly pick uh-huh. people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. No, they sure. don't. I'm sure they were like, "Oh, we need a speaker for today." I'm happy to add your service. And she says the same fucking thing over and over and over again. She the took- interesting thing mm-hmm. also is in the car ride back from the meeting, Sonia said, that man was so sad he just moves from town to town to town to start over again. And you kind of get that feeling with Luann moving upstate. Yep. So she can get away with saying the same fucking story over and over again because she probably doesn't stick around, you know, at one meeting for long enough. She calls it pulling a geographic. You ever hear people say that, a geographic? No, I like that. But yeah, it's like starting over. It's ridiculous. We're trying to. I, you know, she really took I'm, Sonia hostage. She took her hostage. She was like, you should come to the meeting. No, you're not going to wear that inappropriate outfit. I'm going to wear the inappropriate outfit. You're not going to speak. I'm going to tell my story. She made sure she had a little odd. It's really, it's, it's really, sick. it's twisted. Yeah, no, I think Luann is a dis, dis, distinctly Trumpian in her behavior. And she's always been like this. She has, but now she really seems worse else. than ever. But it's like with Trump, you know? I'm a New Yorker. Trump has always been this guy that loves a media circus, that knows how to put on a show. He didn't seem so disconnected, right? The guy looks really deranged these days. You're like, this is not the same Trump that I knew growing up as a kid that was in the tabloids all the time. And he was just like a classic New yeah. York, funny, you know, yeah. Bulgarian rich guy. 
it's like, what happened to you? And that's the same with Luann. It's really, really weird. It's bad. It's not good. <sighs> Luann is just getting worse and worse and worse and worse. So we're back at the house. The ladies all agreed, you know what? Let's get the fuck out of this cabana. Let's go home. They make lunch together. They're having a ball. We see this hilarious shot of Luann jumping into the ocean like Splash. That was so funny. Just, And she's floating around, you know, all Just by herself. Just the buoys. All by myself. Like, she's just so thrilled. Yeah, we have a little Ariel. Mm-hmm, sure. Even though she sounds like Ursula. Right? She thinks she's the little mermaid, but she's like, with, with actually, this is going to come into play. We'll get to this. Barbara is telling the ladies, I'm seeing the light. You know, it's kind of like if a construction worker's like, you know, I stick my neck out for Tony one too many fucking times. I'm seeing things for the way they are. Tony, you rat fuck, I'm done with you. They're like, listen, there's a massage therapist here. There's a massage table set up in three rooms. One is Luann's room. She's not going to get it. What are you going to do, Barbara? We're connecting now. You see how we connect and you're part of the group without Luann here? And she's like, yeah, I'm going to get that massage. That's my fucking massage now. That's right. Hey, Lou, fuck you. I love it. I'm so happy for her. I really am. It's so true. She's like completely like gelling with them now. Luann is so toxic. She's so toxic. She comes home. They all run. They scatter. I don't want to see her. I don't want to see her. Leave me alone. She comes in. Hello. And Sonia's expressing that she was upset. You know, like she was very cold to her. She's like, well, I don't understand. Where did all this, oh, I'm so upset come from? You were fine in the car. And she That's says, so sick. That's so sick to me. It is. It is sick. I can't put my finger on it, but it, it, there's something so wrong there. She really reminds Discrediting me. her. Just totally just discrediting. She reminds me of Trump and the reporter. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember. Just, I'm telling you, there's something really awful with Luann. It's really almost evil at this point. It's nasty. Like she's possessed. It's, it is. It's like she's possessed. And so Sonia is explaining... That that's not just any meeting. It happened to be a particularly rough meeting. And she's saying, and, and Luann's like, don't judge them. Don't judge them. No. And she's like, I'm not judging them. I have Luann compassion. Luann is judging them. Luann is the one. She is judging the shit out of them because she has such a superiority complex. Right. Complex. And that's why she's like, don't call it a rough meeting. And this is why I was saying about how she's like, Ursula, poor souls with no one else to turn to. She loves it. She gets off she on it. She goes and she looks down. Literally looks yeah. down in there. Yeah. She, first of all, she's huge. And then she goes up to be the speaker. Oh, did oh. somebody notice me and pick me? Oh, oh, I guess I'll speak. I guess I will. And then... She's nasty. And then, and then what is what is, uh, what is Sonia say? You like the attention. Yeah, you like the you attention. You like the attention. No, bitch. Yeah. Saying Sonia projecting. wants attention. I think you wanted a little attention. Oh, really? She wanted attention, miss? Let me go to the theater where my poster is and go look at myself? That and ask somebody to take a picture? Somebody. It was definitely somebody working for Bravo who just happened, well, excuse me, will you take my photo? The way she goes up to the picture, it is literally the story of Narcissus. That is literally the story, that he fell in the water looking at his own reflection. He keeps looking and looking and looking until he drowns. That is her. She cannot stop. And she's going to drown. Amazing. Look at me. Look at me. And she's going to go right off a cliff. It's insane. It's really... It's nuts. It's honestly, this is the craziest. This is why I love this show. I think it's the realist. I think it is. And it's... But it's also just the arc. You are watching. And we've been saying this. We've been telling you this. This is not a joke. This is not just... Like as Jack Nicholson says in The Departed, don't laugh, this ain't reality TV. Because it really, I'm telling you, this Luann is on a bad track. This is bad. This is really, really bad. This is not just she's putting on a show for the camera. No, is, she's going to die. I, I Please do not let that happen. But I really, she's getting like really, really off the charts. She even lost Barb the Builder. Boy, Bethany seems to really be getting unlucky with uh, her period striking at inconvenient times on these trips with the ladies. 
Can somebody send Bethany a subscription to one of these like Lola, Cora? You know, it's just so funny to me. The woman has all the money in the world and she never has period supplies. Come on, Bethany. I like Bethany a lot. I really do. In, in many ways, I think that I am scarily like Bethany, but it drives me crazy. I'm like, if I had all that money, I would have a lifetime supply of tampons. There are like girls all over this country and the world that can't afford this stuff. It's just like, I don't have a tampon. Great. I don't have a tampon. Where am I going to get a tampon She's right just here? not thinking. I guess. It just, it's part of her charm. She's always, she just always acts like she's dropped into every scenario yeah. that she's in. No matter what, whether it's like, wait, what's happening? What's going on here? Or, oh my God, wait, I'm, I'm bleeding. I have my, oh, I have my period. Wait, I still get that. Oh, she's funny. I think she's just so smart and so on all the time that she forgets about her basic needs. Oh, I was supposed to eat. Yeah. Oh, right. But she doesn't forget about her daughter. Then we see, uh, Barb. Barb the Builder getting ready for dinner. They're outing. And she's giving herself a little spray tan, a little Stanley Hansen leg spray. Look, I understand some people are on a budget and that's the best you can do and it's convenient for like the temporary thing, but I've tried it and I found it to be horrible. And what she's, was the problem that you had? Did it rub off easily? It rubs off easily. The color's very orangey. It sprays all over the place. You make a mess. But Barbara, rule number one, you don't spray your spray tan on your legs in the middle of the bedroom on the white carpet and the white bedding. Go in the shower and do it. You stand in the stall, you spray your legs, and then you rinse it all out. What are you doing? But I guess, I mean, what would I expect from a construction work? What do I know about a self tan? I was just trying to look good. I'm from the Bronx. I wanted to look like a Latina. What? <laughs> I'm in Miami. I want to look like Cardi B. AOC. AOC. <laughs> Get a nice little caramel <laughs> color going on here. <laughs> then we find out that Miss Delessips is very sad. Love Where her. was my massage? I mean, yes, I spent the afternoon not getting you your truffle fries that I was filmed reading the message request for. I was very busy looking at myself and swimming into the sea with Ursula and Flounder and Sebastian. But why didn't you hold hair and makeup for me? Why didn't you get me the massage? It's good for I'm my sobriety. I'm always at the bottom of the totem pole. Oh, my Lord. Oh my God! But of Tinsley, course. Tinsley gets out ahead of them to go on this date. I don't know what's wrong with Tinsley. Tinsley, I she love is, her. She has, gets on my nerves though. It's like Tinsley, you're forty three years old. You think it's low self esteem? She acts like she's twelve. I, I, you know, I don't need to have a baby. I've talked about having a baby for years and years and years, but I don't need to have a baby. I'm, maybe I'm happy with Chihuahuas. Who? She's just trying to please this this cutie. What do you mean please the guy? This is their first date, and she's like, I was arrested. I had no, a mugshot. I went to jail. No, but then she's saying, I don't, you know, I don't need babies. She's trying to, you know, she's, whatever you want. I honestly thought she was just drunk and ranting and raving at this poor guy on their first date, like, because she won't go to therapy. And she's just telling him everything that she wants to say. I mean, my mother really wants me to have a kid, but maybe I don't even really want a kid, right? Like, maybe I'm fine with chihuahuas, right? That's what it came across like to me. Oh, like, I thought, Okay. I think she's just like telling this guy her, you know, the moment she, because before all this happened, she was pretty happy. And then she got in this abusive relationship. The guy was beating her up. And then Ooh. the guy in Palm Beach that had her arrested, the guy was beating her up really bad. And then she had a downfall. She went from Miss Socialite. So I think she's telling this guy the story from like when she like lost her mind. Like everything is fine. But then I got a mugshot. Oh, so it is like a therapist. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was just her trying to pathetically. No, I think, I mean, may, who knows, but I think. I mean, he's very cute. Oh, again with the cute. But then Ramona gets stuck with Luann because the ladies are taking off without her. They're done with her shit. And Ramona's like, well, I'm going to wait for Luann. It's not nice. And then Luann is horrible to her and she comes down and she realizes the other ladies left. She's like, whoa, that's what I get for being nice. I got to ride with this woman. <laughs> I think the shit's about to hit the fan. This is making me very anxious. So we just had to stop because I see that the Bethany volcano is like, we're on the verge. It's coming. It's going to blow. So let's just unpack. They're seated. What led to this moment. Yes. Tinsley kissed 
ba 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 because this, this is a cute six year old and now they're seated. Why that's important is that we are establishing for the scene. This is actually this is why this show's so good. We really could be dissecting great theater right now, right? Why do we see that Tinsley kiss the guy to establish that Miss Tinsley is very drunk in a way that she usually isn't, and so she's going to be a lot less inhibited. Miss Southern manners gone out the window. Okay. Barbara takes the opportunity, now that they're all together, to tell Luann in the most sincere and vulnerable oh, way. I, I want. Barbara. I hope she doesn't get the apple. I think, Barbara, for your own sanity, get the hell off this show. You know what? I think they've been rude to you and horrible to you. A lot of them. I was thinking about it. What they said to her, telling her, you know what, your energy is very negative, womp womp. Is that really a good way to bring up something? She's just not meant for this crowd. But she's trying to get through to her dear friend, Luann. She's like, Luann, when you needed the intervention, I stopped everything for you. I know you did. I like literally, my whole life, I stopped for you. And I feel like in this friendship, I care a lot more about you than you do about me. And when I was having a breakdown today, you didn't have my back. And all I wanted was a big Lou hug. Well, I'm going to give you the hug. I'll give you the hug right now. And Shut they... the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. I'm giving you a hug. Shut the fuck up. Don't throw me under the bus. I'm, I'm, giving, you a... I'm giving you a hug. Yeah, I know. It's like, is that the truth coming out? No, 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 no darling. Sure, 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 Here's the yeah. hug. Here's Here. the hug. Here's the Kool-Aid. Here's the Kool-Aid. Here you go. I love you. You're back to my defender now. <laughs> Thwarted you, ladies. And Bethany rang they out They call right her. Away. They called her out. She's like, you just don't want her to speak her truth. I see. Okay. Right. You just don't want her to get it all out. You're like trying to like cover up this whole thing. She's like, no, I want to hear what she has to say. Oh my God. And then what? at one point she said, it's not my fault. What was she referring to? It's getting a little bit messy because this fight is now spilling over and... Tinsley. Oh, and then oh, 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 making fun of Tinsley for drinking. Oh, wait a minute. This is this is now the moment that I'm going to say Luann. This episode is the transformation of Luann into like supervillain. She was already bad, but now it's like, oh my God, she's What did hatching. she say to Dorinda last night? Oh, she's changed. Or last season, she's changed. She's, yeah, there, she's turning. She's turning. This well, this is, is no, the turning of Luann. No, this is seriously, it's like watching one of those like prequel movies about how someone became a villain, like Maleficent or something. Like she was always a little crazy, but this is... This is the moment that reminded me of the Wicked Witch of the West. Because Tinsley is trying to say that Barbara has always been there with her sword and shield for Lou. And she's a little bit drunk. Well, she's a lot drunk. And she tries to say, and she's, you know, she's trying to say something. And Lou goes, I'm sorry, what? It was like when the Wicked Witch shows Dorothy Auntie M and then she appears... It was so, there was something so malicious in the way she did it. And I love Tinsley because Tinsley was not having I'm it. I'm drinking. Oh yeah, Luann, I'm drinking. And Tinsley has been so respectful of her. When all these other bitches are drinking in her face and getting hammered, Tinsley's the one who's like, well, I'm going to go drink at the hotel. Like, I don't want to drink around Lou. She went to her stupid fucking crazy bumblefuck cabaret in the middle of nowhere Right? I mean, she's been so nice to Luann and so polite with all her bullshit. And you have the nerve... What? I didn't understand you. And when Bethany says, this is where we stopped and had to comment, that something blindsided her about the way she mocked Tinsley, that this is it, I felt the same way. Because I'm like, you know what? It's not like Dorinda, who has gone after her so many times. Tinsley did nothing. Nothing to deserve that. And that's when I'm like, Luann is gone. There's something so surreal about watching this. It is. It is. She was always a narcissist, like to classic narcissists, like delusions of grandeur saying, I'm the countess, I'm above everyone, here's how to do this, oh no, 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 darling, blah, blah, blah. But now it's just so direct. She had this fall from grace and has become this really deranged version of her former self. It's weird. It's almost like when you get the backstory... 
of like these Batman villains. Yeah. Like who the Joker was, yeah. who the Riddler was, who Two Face was, who the Countess was. Yeah, it's like who the Countess was. I mean, now a she nurse. belongs. She belongs. Yeah, she was she's a, a nurse. She belongs in Arkham Asylum. She's crazy, and this is horrible. And I'm really nervous because I know Bethany's about to lose it. And she'll be in the asylum, and she'll be singing her song. Well, that's her whole thing. Like, when they let them out of Arkham Asylum, the Joker will be terrorizing people, the Riddler, hmm, riddle me this. And then you'll have, chic, c'est la vie. Oh, we have arrived. I'm, I'm really, I'm disturbed by this. It's not funny. It is, very, no, it's surreal. It's so fucked up. It's like you're, well, I don't like it because, you know, we talk a lot, a lot about being in AA and it's starting to really bother me because... I don't go anymore because of people like Luann. You have flashbacks. I have flashbacks. And I had two really, really, really dear friends that I tried really hard to save, much like Bethany feels. And I had conversations like this and I watched this happening. I'm like, how did you go from being this person that I thought was, okay, a little kooky, but you know, you have a good heart to a full-fledged monster. I don't like what I'm seeing. And, 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 and my mom, AA is good. AA it is. It's generally it. good. It's just that. But I remember my mom, because she used to go to AA meetings. And when I started going, she said, just so you know, the people in AA are a lot sicker than the people outside of it. They are. She warned me. They are. And I thought, oh, no, you crazy bitch. You're just jealous that I'm getting sober because we had that kind of relationship. But she was right. No, she was right. And... I think a lot of it is because there's people that blame all of their bad behavior on the alcoholism and they think they're cured when they come to AA, but AA is just one tool and they neglect to get real mental health services. And so you're dealing with a lot of people with untreated illness. I actually went to a meeting once where I printed out the statistics and it was like 88% of people in AA or, or people who are diagnosed with alcoholism have another illness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, eighty-eight percent. A personality disorder, for or a bipolar. Happy, healthy people don't become alcoholics. Happy, healthy people don't get so drunk and end up arrested and start threatening the police and do all this shit where they destroy all their friendships. I mean, this is like really disturbing. It's it's off the charts, but I. It but is we're really good. we're happy and healthy. This is. We're very happy and healthy. I mean, I take a lot of meds and they keep raising my medication and I'm uninsured, so it's costing a lot of money. But should we continue? Aren't you happy and healthy? I mean, you've been sick all evening. I've <laughs> <laughs> been having a little stomach trouble. A little bit like last year's trip to uh, Cartagena when the ladies were having some tummy issues, but I'm okay. No, look, we're not on cloud nine here but we're aware of our issues that's the difference like we joke all the time about how fucked up we are but i feel like that's the difference there's like really crazy where you don't think you're crazy and then there's like you're crazy but you know you're crazy what a day this has been what a rare mood i'm in this is really upsetting Why it's, it's almost like being Luann, this is really a smile on my face. Now you're being like Luann. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I have I'm no... like on the verge of tears. There's like, too much going on. I'm just gonna first sing. Of all, they're, first of all, they're bringing a fucking toaster. Those are the lobster pop tarts. There's okay, so they're bringing much. a fucking toaster to the table. There's a Buddha there, and then they bring. Did you see part of it? They bring a fucking. Uh, like a popcorn machine that you'd see in a movie theater. Did you see that? What's going on? And there's all these extras in the background. It's really... Not even paying attention. This is really, to really... one of the most intense things I have ever seen. It's very chaotic. And I think they must be extras that were told to just mind their business. Because I think Bravo has been burned with these restaurant fights before. I'm sure restaurants have complained about yeah. the patrons. Um, we're there trying to unpack it. There are a few people looking. Yeah, I think... But very they're... sort of... Right. I mean, if we were looking, this would be us. Yeah, I would be trying not to. Really trying to mind my business. But this is just really, really upsetting me. I think I'm taking it a little bit personally. You because are. Because of my... That's okay. My friends that uh, passed Psychos. away. Psychos. It's that I can relate to 
everything Bethany's saying so much. And I know that frustration and I know that feeling when you, you're like, I went so above and beyond for you. Are you kidding me? And this person that you literally have sacrificed so much for is just going to kill themselves anyway, which is very apparent here. But we're trying to dissect this slowly. So Luann starts by saying, what a day this has been. Oh. And then we got Tinsley. And Tinsley's so good I'm right loving now. Tinsley. Yeah, what a day this has been. <laughs> she reminds me of Honey. Yes. In Virginia she Wall, is. all of a sudden she's... She is. <laughs> and Bethany's Martha. Yeah. It's really... Oh my God. Right, what a day this has been. And Bethany says... You're dining out on your sobriety. And I think what that means, we were talking about it, that she's like, dining out on your sobriety. I took it to mean, like when you say like you're dining out on someone else's card type of thing, like you're using this whole sobriety thing for your cabaret, cabaret, cabaret. Life is not a cabaret, right? Oh my God, this is getting so ugly. I don't even know. I'm trying, but I have to say, I'm stunned at how emotional the other women are getting too. Oh my, it's bizarre. I thought it was it's just surreal. me, but even Ramona's like, this is Sonia, so Sonia, Ramona, sad. Ramona made me laugh. I know, because Ramona usually doesn't really show that much empathy, but I think she, even she feels I think everything's just pain. coming out. I and think they are Ram- also so, seeing what we're seeing. And Lam- Luann has been with them from the beginning. This is, you know. I know. She's an original. I think Luann is in really serious trouble, and I think And Luann, I think they know a lot more than... Evidently. I mean, Bethany's about to go on a roll. We just paused to have a little chat, but... All right. We'll be back. I'm trying so hard, you guys. I really don't want to be like Bethany. They did eat the um, the Pop-Tarts. Yeah, at some point during this thing, they're eating. So at least there's that. Well, see... Tinsley, through this whole thing, is so oh. wonderful because she gives me a little bit of comic relief. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to get through this. And You're not... being rude. Yeah, no, well, what happens is Luann is being so awful because Bethany's getting up and getting really emotional. And she's so triggered. And she's saying, do you understand? I buried my guy. He's in the ground of an overdose after he helped you. After he helped you and you never checked up on him. You have not asked me how I'm doing with the whole thing. You have not asked me. And Luann's like, look at yourself. And Justin's like, don't say look at yourself. That's fucking rude. It's that it's not it's so beyond rude. It's like just that she says it so simply. Like it's just a and rude. The fact comment. that she's shit faced is even better. That's fucking rude. Wow. I mean this as is... Ramona would say, Wow, Bethany. Wow. And Ramona's in tears. Ramona's in tears. They're all in tears. I'm in tears. It's horrible. The pain Bethany is going through is so palpable. She's grieving. And yes, can you imagine the level of anger that you and this man you loved took time out of what turned out to be the last days together to help this asshole? She who, is a fucking asshole. She doesn't care she is about an asshole. anybody in the middle of this. But when Bethany says that that Barbara's been was her doormat, yeah, she says, you know, she's my friend. Was, was my me. friend, and Barbara is like so crestfallen. That was so horrible. That that shot of Barbara. I love. I'm sorry about all the things we've said about you, Barb. Well, I think we've made fun of her in good spirit. I think we defended her a lot too, and all their homophobia and all their bullshit. But now I really, really feel for her. You know what, Luann? Fuck you, Luann. You're horrible. This is. Wow. And when Bethany goes on this monologue about how all the things she had to do for her, she's slamming the table. She's like, I am so mad. I am so mad. Because she's like, I had to sit in your driveway to make sure you wouldn't get in the car because you almost killed your friends and you were running through the field in a negligee and you had to be taken in cop cars and I had to make sure you weren't actually arrested. For her to be, and calling her a bully and you're this and you're that. It's so off the charts. And Bethany finally, and Bethany's tried so hard to be patient with her all season. Letting little things go, letting the digs go, letting the countess behavior go. I And what I feel is because Luann goes, well, I'm persona non grata. 
And Sonia goes, you're not persona non grata. If we didn't love you, we wouldn't be so upset. They're not all crying just because Bethany's losing it. No, it's like they're crying because I think looking at Ramon, it's like this is the loss of a friend. They realize that Luann is in serious, serious this is, could trouble. Be, I, for some reason, I had this image with watching Ramona cry like, oh, that's going to be Ramona at, at Luann's funeral. It's really upsetting. It's really, really hard to watch this. It's hard, like, you know, you watch it and you have empathy for Bethany and you're upset to see Luann. You know, in a way, we have this attachment to these people. They've been on TV so long. And that's what's so sad. That was, uh, yeah, especially Luann's watching... an OG. Bethany's an OG. Ramona. Ramona's an OG. To see Luann like this, you're just like, oh my God. It's surreal. And yeah, it is. It's hitting very close to home for me because I would have conversations. Like, I had one friend who wound up killing herself, who was a lot like Luann. And, you know, at one point I said I needed to take some space from her because she was driving me crazy, you know? Like, I was auditioning to go to these acting schools and I had worked really hard to do, these, like, for big drama schools. It wasn't like my little local. Like, I was auditioning for Yale. And it was really important to me. And the night before that audition, this woman calls me up drunk driving in a blizzard in the middle of nowhere. And I had to go get her and take her car all the way back to Long Island. It was like a big drive from where she was. Then take my own car back home. She didn't care about me. And when I was like, I have driven you to rehab. The rehab kicked you out. I picked her up. She went to, when I asked for space, she said, you're obviously a horrible friend who never cared about me. I drove up in the mountains in the middle I of the night that. at the last minute to get you out of the rehab that kicked you out. I drove with you babbling to yourself in the back seat, taking you to a different rehab so that you wouldn't be home for one second to drink again. I took you. And in the end, what do you get? This woman is homeless. They find out there's tequila bottles all over her car. She doesn't care what anybody does for her. She had a wonderful sponsor too. In addition to me being her friend, she had one of the good people in AA was her sponsor. Broke her back horseback riding. And this woman was texting her. I don't think you really care about me. Telling me, you know, I just need her to be there. She broke her back. You know, and I just, I feel what Bethany's feeling. Like, do you not see how everyone at this table, ultimately, this is love. We don't want you to fucking die. And you don't get it. And you're walking around, jumping in the ocean, looking, look at my poster. It's life and death. When Bethany says the body is in the ground, I've told people that. I've lost it on younger people who think like sobriety is a joke. I've met people who are like, they're getting clean off heroin and they're like, yeah, you had a little slip. <laughs> and I'm like, when you bury two of your best friends, then it's not a fucking joke anymore. And I get it. And I'm sorry for ranting and raving, but I'm just like, and I'm sure there's a lot of people, given the major drug problem that we have in America, and there's a lot of people watching Housewives of New York that totally relate to this people who have kids who are like this people who have spouses who are like this parents siblings it's horrible it's really horrible and this show is one of the best shows ever and this episode is in like the top three of all time absolutely this last scene we had to re-watch it a bunch of times yeah we watched it what like three or four times we watched it live we were like shot we were holding each other i held her hand yep it was so... I I'm gonna have to wash it now. I, I'm... I don't know what to say, guys. This is just... Wow. I mean, I love to laugh. I love to make fun of them all. I just feel like... I can't even find the humor in this right now. It's not even... It's like you can look back at Scary Island and laugh at that and laugh at Kelly saying she thinks Bethany's gonna kill her and Bethany's saying, Go to sleep! Go to sleep! And Jill showing up. Hi! You know, that was funny. Their boat trip from hell in Colombia, that was sort of funny. I mean, they were their lives were in danger, but it was pretty funny. This, to me, is really not amusing. The only thing, the only comic relief, which is like what you find in all the great dramas, is Tinsley with her innocent, drunk banter. Yeah. So fucking rude. That's fucking rude. Wow. All right. That's all, folks. I'm sorry to end on such a sour note, but thank you for watching. I wanted to say thank you to the people who've been subscribing and leaving us comments and Very likes. Very nice. It really means a lot. And one and Barb, I love you. We love you, Barbara. Please leave the show for your own sanity. <laughs> this is not healthy. Uh, guys, let us know what else we should be recapping. But I'm happy to say, I thought that this was the last episode. It looked like we were only going to get 15 episodes of New York, and now... There's a lot left. No, because so. there's the 80s workout scene. 80s workout scene. We have, I think, 
Luann's new song. I don't even want to look at Luann One day anymore. At a time, yeah. please. You talk about dining out on your sobriety. I'm making another that's hit exactly, song. That's exactly what she's talking about. Making songs about this anyway. Goodbye. <laughs>